how would you like to have that confidence of not only being able to crush your forehand like that, but know with certainty that you're executing every phase with world-class technique? And whether you're feeling tight, weak, or tense right now on your forehand, I've boiled down just five common mistakes that players make throughout the forehand that if you master, which you will by the end of this video, you'll know with that confidence you're executing world-class forehand technique. We're gonna start with the fifth most common mistake and finish with the number one common mistake. So let's jump right in to number five. If your forehand feels tight, rushed, or late, then this mistake is gonna be a game changer for you. Now, this has everything to do with the unit turn. As you'll see, if we pull out Djokovic, Alcaraz, and Nadal, you'll see that they all achieve very similar unit turn configurations. And the primary mistake that so many players make with their unit turn, and I also wanna highly encourage you to have footage of your stroke out as we cover these mistakes, so you can review and know of these mistakes are you making any and what's the correction the next time you step on the court? As you'll see, the common mistake is that rather than having the elbow bent at a 90 degree angle, the arm is actually gonna be straight during that unit turn position or not bent at that 90 degree angle. And see the challenge and problem with that is it causes you to take your racket back with way too much energy of the right arm versus having it bent in that 90 degree angle we see the best players in the world doing, that's gonna allow you to fluidly drop it into that backswing and generating that effortless power. So the key checkpoint to focus on is when you're executing your unit turn, make sure you have that 90 degree bend of that right elbow because what that's gonna do is allow you to fluidly drop and then generate that effortless acceleration just like that. All right, now you've mastered mistake number five. Let's jump in to number four. Are you struggling with generating a lot of fluid momentum and also creating that gorgeous racket flip position? Then you're gonna love exactly how to correct common mistake number four. If we pull out, again, the best players in the world, you'll see that as they execute their backswing position, their racket is gonna be positioned on the hitting side of the body away, just like that. And the biggest common mistake that I've seen so many players make with their backswing is that rather than just fluidly dropping their arm back to achieve this position, rather they're going to take their arm up and then back into this position. So just remember, the next time you step on the court, rather than taking your arm up and back as you accelerate, Focus on just very fluidly setting the arm down and then using that natural acceleration to go forward into the shot. So high prep, that unit turn with the bent elbow you just mastered, fluid drop, uh, and then accelerate up and away forward and crush it just like that. All right, now you know exactly what to look for with that backswing. Let's jump into common mistake number three. If you're struggling to generate massive power and spin, on your forehand, then it's likely you're making this common mistake. Or if we pull out the best players in the world again, watch and notice that as they initiate their acceleration, it's gonna occur from the ground up. The best players in the world utilize a kinetic chain that's initiated from the leg drive. And the primary common mistake that I've seen with so many players, especially older players, is that when they accelerate, rather than initiating from the ground up, driving the legs, rotating, and using those bigger muscles to generate a lot of force, they're rather just gonna step and accelerate just like that, where the majority of the power is generated from the arm. So the key element for you to focus on and really master is that when you're accelerating, are you consciously focusing on how much force that you're generating from your legs, you know, whether you're doing the transfer move, the lateral hop, the front foot hop, are you really focused on your footwork? That is gonna be a game changer because you're gonna feel this fluidity. You're gonna feel like this dance and flow. And ultimately, if you really wanna uh, immediately get all of that in your muscle memory, I really wanna encourage you to click the link 
in the description where you'll have a video that you can watch where you can learn exactly how to transform all of the holistic areas of your forehand and put it into your muscle memory. So I encourage you, smash that button in the description right now and learn about the forehand transformation system. All right, now that you know common mistake number three, let's jump over to common mistake number two. If you're struggling to generate that ATP fluid racket flip on your forehand, then it's likely that you're making this common mistake. Now, if we look at the best players in the world, you'll see that when they accelerate, because of the position of their backswing, as they accelerate, the arm will be traveling on an arc path away from the body and then in towards the middle of the body. And the really common mistake that prevents so many players from actually creating this racket flip, and therefore that massive topspin, is that when they accelerate, rather than having their arm travel away from their body, the arm will instead travel because the arm is gonna bend in towards the center of the body. So it's really key the next time you step out on the court, focus on achieving that key backswing position we just talked about and accelerating by pulling your arm away from your body. Whether you're implementing the Alcaraz technique of the arm traveling down in a way, or the Feder Nadal technique of the arm traveling up in a way, it's critical that that arm travels from that right hip away from the trunk, just like that. That counter force is gonna create that amazing racket flip that we see the best players in the world doing on every single forehand. Again, if you want step-by-step -step drills, as well as accelerated learning techniques to put that ATP racket flip into your unconscious muscle memory, then you know what to do. Smash that link down in the description and get yourself signed up for the forehand transformation system. All right, you've waited through this video. Let's close with the number one most common mistake that players make on their forehand and it's gonna allow you to generate that effortless pop. The number one most common mistake that is the result of wrist pain wrist tension, loss of consistency, and just general frustration is what's known as wrist flexion. Now, I used to make this exact mistake. When I first started playing tennis, I would step out, I'd be so excited to play, but I would try to generate power from my wrist. And what would happen is in my mind, I really wanted to execute pro technique, but when I would accelerate, ugh, it just felt so tight, felt so weak, it just felt awful. And it's because I was making this common mistake. So let's go ahead and learn exactly how we can transform it. So if we pull out the best players in the world, you'll notice that during their acceleration, because their wrist is tight or relaxed, exactly relaxed, that they're gonna be able to generate the racket flip and then let's transition right to their contact point and now shift to a side angle where we're gonna see that with their contact point, the racket is gonna be pointed towards that side fence, just like that. And the common mistake here is that rather than having that wrist in an extended position, right, where the palm should be oriented towards the net at contact with your follow through as well, the wrist is gonna be positioned in a flex position in the arm too close to the body, just like that. So the key checkpoint to implement is with your contact point you really wanna focus on getting that arm to be positioned in front of the body with the wrist in an extended position. So now I'm gonna provide you with two step-by-step -step drills that you can follow to correct this mistake and go from feeling really tight and frustrated to really confident and powerful and effortless on your forehand. Now these are just two of the 15 game-changing transformative drills in the forehand transformation system. So if you haven't already clicked that button below to learn about the world's best forehand transformation system, go ahead and click that right now before we jump in to these drills. So in drill number one, the first and most uh, important thing for you to improve is with your contact point. So like we talked about before, rather than having that arm from the shoulder to the elbow positioned in front of the body, the arm will be positioned too close and as a result, the wrist is gonna be in that flex position. So in drill number one, you wanna focus on fluidly executing shadow swings and stopping at that perfect contact you just learned about 
where the palm is going to be oriented towards that net, just like that. After you execute some fluid shadows, stopping at that contact point, you're then going to work with a friend or feed yourself balls and just focus on stopping right at that contact and don't worry about the power. After you execute that drill, then level up the power until you're executing full speed, crushing your forehand and feeling yourself achieve that perfect contact point. The game changing tip and intuitive realization that allowed me to just start bombing my forehand while maintaining full consistency is to focus on really deliberately keeping the wrist as loose as possible as you accelerate using your pec and your shoulder muscle as well as your whole kinetic chain and as you accelerate throughout contact deliberately just relax that wrist as you're accelerating through and you're going to find that even though you're hitting the ball really really hard because that wrist is in a relaxed extended position you're not going to be losing consistency because you're going to be generating that massive topspin and not flexing the racket to cause that ball to sail long. The second drill that is going to be an absolute game changer and is going to allow you to create both a deeper racket flip as well as an increased stretch and shorten cycle which is responsible to generate significantly more power and spin on your forehand. What I want you to do is go ahead and grip your racket with just your index finger and your middle finger. And from this position, go ahead and execute very fluid shadows. And now with this very relaxed wrist, you're gonna feel that the racket is gonna be flipping deeper in that shoulder and creating more of that wrist extension. So by gripping the racket and having these bottom two fingers off, now as you accelerate, the weight of the racket is gonna contribute to a deeper flip. So what you wanna focus on as you're accelerating is just really feeling that wrist stay very relaxed, generating power from the leg, the core, and that bigger muscle driving forward just like that. And after you execute reps, immediately applying it into having your friend feed you, rallying, using a ball machine, you're gonna instantly feel, oh, wow, that wrist is so relaxed. It feels so easy. I'm generating so much force. It feels like I'm stretching out oh, my shoulder and just generating a lot of easy power. And I know that that drill is gonna be a game changer for you. Last piece I'm gonna close with, now that we've concluded, is you know whether you're making one of the five, two, or all five of the common mistakes like I did when I first started playing tennis, I really wanna encourage you to maintain that high level of ambition, belief, and expectation that you can hit world-class technique. Because when I first started playing tennis, I frankly likely had worse technique than you because I didn't have access to videos like this. But the reason why I was able to really transform and now play with world-class technique is because I believed in myself, because I persisted, because I maintained the learning mindset and believed that just by learning and persisting and gaining new tips here and there and applying them to my game, that I could reach that world-class level of performance. So believe that it's possible for you in any area of your life by just making that a conscious commitment and then persisting at it until you get it. All right, World Class Athlete, I hope you guys absolutely loved this video. I'm really encouraging you, get yourself signed up for the world's best forehand course right down below. It's over 90% off. If now you wanna master the Alcaraz forehand, click there. If you wanna master that serve power, click there. I'm grateful to be your coach. I'll see you in the next video. Let's go.